Hey everybody, Mitchell here from the HockeyRefBook.com and this is video number three of six about game management. And in this video we're talking about managing hotspots. As always, you can make reference to the book How to Referee Hockey. It's not just about the rule book, it's available for purchase on the HockeyRefBook.com and of course there's references at the bottom of the slides as we go through this video. As always, these videos are about positioning, procedures, and game management. This video specifically is jumping into the idea of game management, where we are talking about managing hotspots. Now, managing hotspots, as a reminder, is not by itself a skill that exists in vacuum. It exists along with ideas like managing your emotions, your nonverbal communication, your presence on the ice, and all of those ideas are available in game management videos number one and number two. But what we're going to talk about today is that idea of a hot spot and what it is that you're looking for on the ice and where you're going at a stoppage to ensure that you are doing your job and having the most success possible. Now a hot spot, for my definition that is, a hot spot is any place during a stoppage where opposing players are near each other. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're pushing or yelling at each other or swearing at each other or calling each other names. It just means that they're close to each other. That's the definition of a hotspot. Opposing players are close to each other. Think of it kind of like a pot on a stove. The pot itself is a game. The water inside are the players. Those players are by definition in the ice together, on the ice together, so they're always close to each other sometimes closer than other times, but they're always in that same enclosed environment of the game. We can't change that. They're going to be close to each other. Underneath that pot, there's an element, right? And that element can be hot or it can be cooler. We can control the heat of that element. And what we're doing when we're at these hot spots and managing these hot spots is we're trying to keep the element low because we can't actually remove make the players remove themselves from the pot, remove themselves from the game, right? So that's what we're trying to do with our hotspot management at stoppages is keep the element on low so that the water doesn't boil over into altercations or fights or whatever else we can think of happening that we don't want to have happen. Now, presence at hotspots is really touching back on the previous video in which presence is defined as Everyone knows you're on the ice, but you're not the center of attention. And what we're trying to do with the hot spots during a stoppage of play is use that idea of presence, that everyone knows you're there, but you're not the center of attention. And by doing that, the players are gonna be thinking, or hopefully thinking, I should behave, the referee is nearby, or the lines person is nearby. And we do that by managing our hot spots. There's always three hot spots every whistle, every stoppage. The first hot spot is wherever the players have stopped. The second hot spot is the next face-off spot. And the third hot spot that's kind of happening at the same time is where the players are changing or the path that they're taking to their benches. Now we're gonna go through some examples. We're gonna use the two official system because it is more complex than the, it's more complex than the uh, three official system more difficult to, to apply. So the first hot spot is going to be where the players are when the play stops. Okay, so let's imagine that the goalie covers up the, pot, the puck. O1 is going to come in and stop play right down here. And then O2 is gonna come in from their blue line and they're gonna get in between the players in order to get them to separate and encourage them to go to their benches. So that's the first hot spot. The second hot spot is going to be the next face-off spot. So you're gonna to have to work with your partner in order to manage that, that hot spot along with the third hot spot. But that first hot spot, or that second one, the next face-off spot, O1 can take that puck over to the next face-off spot and they can talk to the players to come in and uh, to make sure that they know where they're supposed to line up. And just chat with them, create positive presence. They're not the center of attention, but everyone knows that they're there. The other hot spot, that third one, is where the players are changing. That allows O2 to jump up here to the bench, benches. They can do line change procedure and also create that presence at the benches. So that's kind of the 
progression that we're thinking of when we're managing hotspots uh, during a stoppage of play. Now there's going to be different hotspots, different situations that come up and these are, we're going to run through some of the ones that are uh, kind of special, uh, special circumstances. Here's the first one. At the end of the game there are opposing players in the penalty box and the game ends in the visitor's zone. So we first of all have to know what our hotspots are and these will be our hotspots at the end of that game. The players at the benches might be jumping on the ice. The players from the penalty box are going to be coming onto the ice. And then the players, wherever the player was stopped. And we have to work with our partner to set ourselves up in such a way that we can watch these different hot spots. And then simultaneously have our head on a swivel and decide which one of them is most uh, pressing to deal with first. If these players separate from the box, we can go focus on this one. If these ones are pushing and shoving, we go deal with this one and just kind of hope that nothing happens here. But what we're doing is we're going to be aware of them all, head on a swivel, and just by looking around, people will know that. They'll know in the back of their minds the officials are aware of everything, so you're not the center of attention, but people know you're there based on your hotspot management and your awareness. So that's the first one, having these, all these different hotspots to deal with. Here's the second one. After the ice is flooded, the teams are coming on the ice. So there's two circumstances that come up here. Perhaps the teams come in through the same gate, or maybe they come in through different gates. Here's the first one. So here's the gate. That's going to be a hot spot because that's where the teams are coming in together. They're near each other. They're going to take that path. We potentially have a hot spot up here at the home bench. If there's, if there's potentially a team up here, and then there's definitely one down here where the, both teams are coming on at the same time. So O1 is down here managing this one, O2 is up here ready to manage the home bench and the visitor bench as the teams come to their benches. Here's the second circumstance. Now in this circumstance, there is no hot spot down here anymore because there's, no, there's only one team coming in through this, through this gate. Usually the visitors come in from the far gate. In this situation, the home team comes in from this gate. So we have a home, we have a, a hot spot right here. That means that O1 and O2 can pop up towards the benches and manage the hot spot at the benches here before going on to doing the center ice face off. So you're always thinking to yourself, where are the opposite players from the opposite teams interacting with each other? And that's where I'm going to want to be at any given point in time during a stoppage. Here's a couple more examples after a goal is scored. So let's imagine that in period one or three, the, the team that scores has to pass in front of the other bench first. So visitors score. Your first hot spot's wherever the players are going to be, so we have to get them separated and heading to their bench. But once they head to their bench, they're going to create this hot spot right in front of the home team's bench, and O1 has to get up here to make sure there's separation and that we're managing that hot spot at the home team's bench as uh, the players skate past there. We don't want to let scoring players skate by the other team's bench without someone there to supervise them. Here's the other one. We're going to flip the second period now. Home team scores. They're going to pass by the, the visitor's team, the visitor bench second. We're going to separate those players, get them going to their benches. Owen's going to get ahead of the players, though, get to center ice. And as they high five at their bench, Owen's going to say, okay, nice goal, head to center ice, because we want to manage that hot spot right there. Teams go to the scoring team goes to center ice, and then they can go for their change or maybe line up for the next faceoff. So all sorts of different ideas coming along, uh, coming on here. Second period, delayed penalty against home. The visitor goalie gets pulled, then returns the next stoppage. That visitor goalie is going to create a hot spot. They're going to come back from their bench, and they're going to create that hot spot right here. So O2, who is the, the official in the neutral zone, needs to be aware of this hot spot, specifically because this goalie is coming back to their net, right? Always wondering where are the two teams going to be interacting or possibly interacting and making sure that we're providing presence at those places. There is well, at least one team, one penalty being called against both teams. So this is a complex situation that you're going to have to deal with. The first hot spots can be the players in the end zone. So wherever those players are, making sure they separate and head towards their own benches. Right? O1, of course, is going to have a penalty on delay, likely. It could be O2, but in this circumstance, it's O1. The players changing are going to be a hot spot because the players will separate and go to their benches. But we're also going to have this third hot spot here because we have to take two players to the box and they are together, which means they're a hot spot. 
So O1 is going to take the two players to the box, right? O2 has to simultaneously manage these players at the bench and also being aware of any players that are still in the end zone. Once O1 has reported the penalty, they pop over here and now they can take over the bench and O2 can go end up deal with the end zone and the next face-off spot. And as you can see right here, we have O2 managing two hot spots. But once we get rid of this hot spot, O1 can pop down and then take over the benches and O2 can go and manage the next face-off spot. And all that's left is the next face-off spot and then we get those puck dropped and we're off to the races. So we have three official, two official, and what we need to consider is the difference between dealing with hot spots in the three official system versus the two official system. So in the three official system, you have the referee and the referee is able to look at the bigger picture of what's going on. The Lions people can get into what the first hot spot, and then when that's over, they're able to separate to the face-off dot and the benches while the referee can continue to watch the big picture. So there's that extra body, that extra body of the referee that gives you more flexibility in how you manage uh, and how you manage stoppages. Right? So that's really the big difference is it allows you to smash stoppages more easily. This is the best example I can give you when you have two players going to the penalty box together. In the two official system we talked about how you would have to, uh, one person, O2 specifically, would have to go and manage both of these hot spots, aware of the end zone and also the benches, until O1 became available to come and spell them off so two could go and manage the face-off, right? In the three official system, the referee can stay in the end zone, which frees up both of the lines people to take the guilty players to the box. Referee still in that end zone, aware of the benches. Maybe the referee could pop up over here, but regardless, the referee can watch all of this while the lines people take the guilty players to the box. The referee can then head over here when the lines people are done, Lines liner two comes over to the face-off dot. This hot spot is hers. And then this liner comes up here and manages the hot spot at the benches. Referee reports the penalty to the timekeeper. Referee can then come down here, do line change procedure, and then everybody can get into position for puck drop and we go on, point, uh, on with the play. So the three official system gives you a lot more flexibility in managing hot spots than the two official system does. Okay. This is what happens when you have poor hotspot management. So we're gonna show you a video here and I'm gonna get you just to watch and see what happens. Let's watch it again. So what we're seeing is this one official just skips the goal point and just goes and reports the goal. The other official rushes to get that puck. Nobody is managing the hot spot where the players are gathering. So this entire problem resulted because both officials focus too much on the puck and going to report the goal rather than dealing with the hot spot. Instead, first stay with the players until they separate. That would be the goalie with the goal scorer, right? And that would be hotspot one. Then deal with the flyby of the players celebrating their benches. That would be hotspot two. And then once this is all done, one person can get the puck. The other one can report the goal. And then they can go set up the next face off at center ice, which would be hotspot number three. Right? And that's how it is that we manage these things. You deal with the players first, get them separated, and then move on to your other tasks. And as we saw in this video, if you ignore your other tasks, then what's going to happen is if you don't ignore your other tasks and you ignore the players instead, you're gonna end up in a situation where no one is helping the players separate and bad things are going to happen, even in a young child's game. So this video uh, has all been all about hotspots. We've talked about how to identify them, different types of hotspots, but the biggest thing about hotspots that I want you to remember is your first question is, where are players from opposite teams close to each other 
I'm going to make sure that I'm covering and aware of those hotspots with good presence so that people know that I'm here, but I'm not the center of attention.